Have you ever wondered about the top three ways to get rid of under eye bags and what works and what doesn't work? I really don't care how convincing that before and after photo is. A lot of times when I look at a before and after photo and it's for laser or skincare cream, I can tell that person's had eyelid surgery or injectables. But it's really difficult for you as a consumer to know that, so that's why I'm here. So I'm giving you guys all the information that you need to make smarter choices now and save tons of money. I cannot wait to share with you my top three tips for getting rid of under eye bags that works every time. First of all, we need to help you figure out if you have dark under eye circles or actually have puffiness to the lower eyelid bags. In this video, I'm actually going to use different examples of celebrities and actually show you my reaction to some pre-makeup, post-makeup, pre-procedure, post-procedure, so you can kind of get a bit of an insight into what I'm looking at when I'm seeing someone and to help determine maybe what you have. In this gorgeous picture of Olivia Wilde, we have one picture that shows her without any makeup and the other picture with makeup. As you can see, she has puffy lower eyelid bags. This can be due to volume loss actually in the cheek area here. So when we lose volume in that cheek area, what happens is the lower eyelid loses its support and it tends to kind of bulge out a little bit. As with many actresses, she has a very low BMI and people with lower BMIs tend to actually have more fat loss in their face as they age. So this is something that I'll see in runners or really physically active people. Very common. Keep watching because I'm going to share with you what she could really benefit from and also what she's had done. Because clearly in this picture over here, there are no puffy eyelid bags and everything looks nice and smooth and uniform. That's not just good makeup, that's a procedure and I'll tell you about it. Also, let's take a look at JLo in this next picture. JLo is often touted as having kind of like a flawless complexion, which you can see on the picture here. But in real life, when she has daylight on her, you're actually able to see really some of the aging that she is experiencing, which I think still looks great too, right? She looks really healthy. She doesn't look overdone or anything like that. But if you look at her under eyelid area here, there's definitely some crepiness. But in my opinion, she has just the right amount of volume here. You see how her cheek uh, doesn't actually extend too far past her brow by about, it only extends about two millimeters past, it's perfect. So in my opinion, her cheeks look great and she has just the right amount of support in the under eyelid. But in this case right here, there's actually something that I could recommend that she have done, which I'll talk about a little bit later. To be honest, in this picture here that I've nicely marked up, she's gorgeous but I think her neuromodulators have actually just worn off and that includes Botox, Zeomin, and Dysport. So she could have just been due for a retreatment at this point because they last about three to six months. Things like neuromodulators are a great way to get rid of fine lines and wrinkles, especially around the eye area and a little bit of puffiness like in that picture of JLo in about one to two weeks. So it happens pretty quick and it is non-surgical, but no eye cream is going to do that. It's very much a treatment. But first, I really wanna talk about skin quality with you. When the skin gets very thin around the eyes, it tends to go a little bit crepey, especially around the eye area. And the skin around the eyes is about as thin as an eggshell and often is the first area of the face to show signs of aging. All right, now let's help you understand the best three ways to get rid of under eyelid bags. First of all, skincare. Number one, it's what you're doing to your skin morning and night every single day. Medical grade skincare is more effective at reducing accelerated aging caused by the sun, pollution, and oxidative stress. Check out my skincare videos on more information on this. Skincare is an area where I see a lot of people wasting time and money on gimmicky products that just aren't going to work, or an eye cream that promises to get rid of dark circles or puffiness. Products can't fix a structural issue, but they definitely can supplement with hydration and nourishment of the skin. Trust me, if there was a skincare product out there that actually got rid of puffy lower eye bags, I would definitely be recommending it. There are, however, some products out there like Neotensil, which has been used over the last couple of years, especially for actors and actresses on film, to act as a Spanx in the under eyelid area. It's basically painted on it. It's kind of like a polymer or like a Spanx. You know how you, when you wear a Spanx, it makes your, your waist look slimmer, kind of tucks everything in. 
you can actually apply some of these plastic like uh, polymer materials on the skin and they'll actually be painted on if you're in the mall sometimes you'll see people uh, getting things painted on their eye bags or their neck and it does actually kind of like shrink wrap the skin but as soon as the skin gets wet it stops working so you're not really paying for anything to improve the skin it's just like wearing spanx my second tip for you is to understand injectables as i mentioned with olivia wilde one of the reasons why you see her puffy lower eye bag so much more is because she has cheek volume loss I actually experienced cheek volume loss when I was about 29. So I had a little bit of dermal filler to go right into my Mailer cheek pad here to keep the support of the lower eyelid bag. However, I absolutely have a word of warning for you with dermal fillers around the eyes. Avoid it around the eyes like the plague. Do everything else you can, like your neuromodulators, skincare, and we'll talk about laser treatments. But you don't want to put any filler into the lower eyelid bag and avoid it like the plague, if you can, into the tear trough area. I see so many side effects occurring with fillers going into the lower eyelid area, and it's the number one area that it dissolve when clients come to see me from receiving injections somewhere else. All right, let's take a look at Krishnal Hartley. She is on a new Netflix show called Selling in Sunset. And I just want to point out some shadows here. So if you look really closely here, she has these weird puffy spots here. And this is from filler being placed in the tear trough. And when there's overhead lights or things like that, you can actually really see uh, this area of puffiness and people that have had tear trough filler because the skin is so thin, it's really difficult to actually fill that and have it look nice and smooth. Very pretty actress and it's kind of a shame to see uh, that happening and then in this picture here there's another uh, you know example where she has this like really weird shadow right here it kind of drops off and then it gets puffy and we don't want that if we take a look at one of her you know fellow actresses on the show you can just see how she's so nice and smooth here right that looks gorgeous and uh, she's probably had some cheek filler and a little bit of you know Botox here and all that, uh, but she hasn't had any filler here. This is normal. This is, you actually wanna see that lower eyelid bag actually hug the eyelid a little bit, not have the lower eyelid bag become one with the cheek because what happens then everything gets pushed up and it just looks weird, makes the eyes actually look smaller. You don't want that puffiness to occur in this area here by getting your tear troughs filled. And unfortunately, there is a particular technique that's being taught all over the world that actually teaches to apply the filler uh, with a cannula that goes kind of in this direction by doing a little bit of like a linear thread. And unfortunately, it's just, it's not working out well. And I'm seeing this happening a lot with celebrities. It's critical to have treatments and fillers placed just so, so that you don't get these weird shadows. In my opinion, for puffiness around the eyes, like in that picture of JLo that I showed you, neuromodulators are amazing for this at just relaxing the muscles around the eyes. Again, in that picture, I think her neuromodulators had probably just worn off and it was time for a retreatment, as they last about three to six months and takes about two weeks to fully work. I actually have a really great video that you can check out on neuromodulators and what the treatment actually looks like. You can watch that video here. Finding an experienced provider for these treatments is key. And when you're focusing around the eyes, I recommend you seek out an oculoplastic surgery office, whether that's with a surgeon or a nurse that's involved in the clinic, because they are experts at that eye area and chances are you're going to get a better treatment from providers that specialize around the eyes. All right, number three, laser treatments. This is unfortunately another area where people can just waste so much time and money on treatments. Lots of lasers claim to tighten and reduce puffy eyelids, which unfortunately will kind of leave you disappointed. Lasers are really helpful for thickening the skin by promoting collagen, and I recommend you actually have these done all over the face, neck, chest, and hands about one to three times a year. I don't recommend just having a laser treatment to the eyes for thickening up the skin because you really want the rest of the face to match too. Get laser treatments only by professional providers, not someone you're finding off Groupon or in a spa. You want to make sure that there's a medical director involved. 
And if you want a specialized treatment to really focus on the eyes, again, hit up a plastic surgery office with an oculoplastics focus so that you're getting a provider that is confident and competent to get into the eyelid area. Because a lot of clinics will leave, you know, quite a bit of a distance from your lash line to where the laser goes, but you really kind of want to get right in there. Okay, I have a bonus tip for you, which in these videos I tend to always give you little bonuses because I want to make sure that you get all the information that you need. If you've tried these non-surgical options and still aren't thrilled with your results, then I can recommend with someone who's called an oculoplastic surgeon to assess if you're a candidate for eyelid surgery. This is called a blepharoplasty and it actually removes excess skin to the lower eyelid and can even reposition some of the fat into appropriate areas to create a smooth look. There you have it. Now you know what actually works and right now, I want you to make this promise to yourself that you're going to stop wasting time and money on products and procedures that promise the world but are really just gimmicky. I really don't care how convincing that before and after photo is. A lot of times when I look at a before and after photo and it's for laser or a skincare cream, I can tell that person's had eyelid surgery or injectables. But it's really difficult for you as a consumer to know that, so that's why I'm here. So I'm giving you guys all the information that you need to make smarter choices now and save tons of money. Let me know if you've ever had a rejuvenation procedure in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe because it lets me know to make more stuff like this. My next video will be talking about getting rid of dark circles, so that is absolutely a must watch. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to head over to rachelvarga.ca where I have a ton of really cool free resources, including podcasts, blog articles. I'm all about just getting really good information out there to help you make smarter decisions for aging well. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye everybody.